Hi, a very good morning. I am Lakshmanarayana Gunta, PGT in Zoology at the AP Model School and Junior College, Garvanja of Jalamuru Mandal, Sri Kakulam District. Today, we are going to discuss the immune system. Under this, we are going to discuss the lines of immunity. Before this, let us discuss what is immunity. Immunity is the overall ability of an individual to fight against the disease causing organisms. It is the ability of the body to fight against the disease causing organisms. Okay. The term immunity was first coined by Mac Perlane Burnett, popularly called as Burnett. This is Burnett and is an Australian virologist. He coined the term immunity for the first time. This Australian virologist has been awarded with the Nobel Prize in the year 1960 for his contributions toward the immunology. Next, what is immune system? Immunity is the overall ability of an individual to fight against disease causing organisms and immune system is the body's defense against disease causing organisms like bacteria and malfunctioning cells. Uh, they may be uh, aged cells, cancerous cells, okay, malfunctioning cells and foreign particles like pollen grains etc. The body's defense against all these is called as immune system and in simple terms uh, we can say that the immune system is the network of all those organs, cells and proteins that are involved in the protection of the body from harmful and infectious agents. Okay, what do you mean by immunology? Immunology is the study of immune system in simple terms. The science which deals with the study of immune system is called as immunology. And this scientist Emil von Behring is called as the father of immunology, the most important one. Emil von Behring is the father of immunology. He also discovered these antibodies. This is the structure of an antibody. We will discuss it later. And this Emil von Behring, he discovered these antibodies. Okay. And he is considered as father of immunology. Okay. I think you have understood the difference between immunity, immune system and immunology. Okay. Okay. This immunity is further divided into two types. The non-specific immunity and the specific immunity. This non-specific immunity it is again divided into external immunity and the internal immunity. This external immunity it is called as the first line defense mechanism. Internal immunity is the second line of defense mechanism. Whereas this specific immunity is the third line of defense mechanism. Let me explain in clear what is the difference between non-specific immunity and the specific immunity. This non-specific immunity, it is a generalized, it is a generalized immunity and it is acquired by the time of birth. That's why it is also called as innate immunity, innate, in the in natal state. By the time of birth, we have this immunity. It is not specific against any microorganisms. Take for an example, our skin, it, pre it prevents virus, bacteria, other pathogens, etc. All these. Okay. It is not specific that it may prevent some virus, it may prevent some bacteria only or it may prevent some other pathogens only. It is not like that. It is equal to all the microorganisms. Okay. That's why it is not specific. Whereas this specific immunity, it is now again divided into two types, active immunity and passive immunity. This specific immunity it involves the antibodies. Antibodies means non-specific immunity is the immunity without involving any antibodies, whereas the specific immunity includes the immunity with the antibodies. This active immunity is again active natural immunity, active artificial. And similarly, this passive immunity is also further divided into passive natural immunity, passive artificial immunity. Okay. Now let us discuss all these things in detail. The first one is non-specific immunity. This non-specific immunity as we already discussed, it, is, it includes the 
general protective reactions of organisms against any invasion but not against any particular organism that's why it is called as non specific non specific because it is not against any particular organism as it is present by the time of birth it is also called as innate immunity also called as natural immunity also called as the native immunity okay the example for this is the skin the skin which acts as a barrier to a number of microorganisms this non specific immunity it fights with microorganisms other than anti bodies okay it fights with pathogens by means other than antibodies this non specific immunity it has two lines of defense the first line of defense and the second line of defense the first line of defense as we already have discussed this first line of defense is called as the external defense whereas the second line of defense it is called as the internal defense why this first line of defense is called as external defense because it prevents the entry of microorganisms the entry of pathogens virus bacteria into the blood okay that's why it is called as the first line the examples includes the skin and the mucous membrane this skin it prevents the microorganism from entering into our body whereas the second line of defense it is called as the internal non specific immunity means if our skin or mucous membrane they fail what happens the microorganisms they find the way into our blood then what happens this second line of defense it is activated means in blood a number of macrophages white blood cells natural killer cells nk cells they are all present they fight with these microorganisms means as it is going inside our body it is called as internal defense and this this is called as the second line of defense and remember one thing all the, the, these two the first line and the second line of defense mechanism they are non specific they are not specific with any microorganism as i already told you these two lines of defense mechanisms they never involve antibodies that's why it is called as non specific immunity okay i will let you know more clearly okay whenever okay whenever a foreign organism attacks our body try to attack our body what happens the first line uh, of defense it is activated take for an example in the form of our skin or mucous membrane if this first line of defense is is failed what happens immediately the second line of defense mechanism is activated means what happens the microorganism they find the way to way into the blood there in the blood the second line of defense mechanism in the form of white blood cells macrophages nk cells they fight with this microorganism and these two as they are not specific with any microorganism they are they are included in non specific defense okay if this second line of defense mechanism also fails what happens then the third line of defense mechanism it is activated which involves the antibodies this particular antigen antibodies they recognize the particular antigen only and they fight with that particular antigen only that's why it is called as specific defense this includes the third line of defense mechanism let me explain all these one by one the first line of defense the first line of defense it is an external defense and it prevents the entry of microorganisms inside the blood okay and it includes two barriers the physical barriers and the chemical barriers the physical barriers they include the skin mucous membrane whereas the chemical barriers they include the secretions of the skin that is the sweat sebum and also lysozyme which is present in the tears saliva okay and the strong acid present in the stomach and also the cerumen the ear wax all these they are included in the chemical barriers okay the first one is the physical barriers physical barriers they are also called as structural or anatomical barriers as the skin it is a structural ba uh, structural barrier okay uh, mucus these are all the structural barriers okay that's why these uh, physical barriers they are also called as structural and or uh, anatomical barriers these physical barriers they include the skin and the mucous membrane okay let me explain how 
द स्किन एक्स एज द फिजिकल बैरियर ओके द इंटैक्ट स्किन इज द लार्जेस्ट डिफेंसिव ऑर्गन ऑफ आवर बॉडी द कैराटिन ए प्रोटीन स्पेशलाइज प्रोटीन कैराटिन प्रेजेंट इन द स्किन इज वाटर प्रूफ एंड इट वॉन्ट एलो द वॉटर फ्रॉम आउट साइड टू इन साइड ओके एंड नियरली वी शेड फोर्टी टू फिफ्टी थाउजेंड स्किन सेल्स एवरी डे दी स्किन सेल्स दे फाइट विद माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स एंड द डेड सेल्स वी शेड दैम डायली ओके वी शेड nearly 40 to 50000 skin cells every day and the same they are formed again okay and the second physical barrier is the mucous membrane this mucous membrane it lines the respiratory tract urinogenital tract gastrointestinal tract and the exposed part of the eyeball the conjunctiva conjunctiva exposed part of the eye, eyeball they all consists of the mucous membrane this mucous membrane it prevents the entry of microorganism that's why it acts as a physical barrier here you can observe this mucous membrane it has a number of cilia the hair like structures fine hair like structures these fine hair like structures they move in a particular direction means as we breathe in the pollen particles and bacteria they bump into the mucus and there they become stuck as this mucus it is gum like substance to this gum like substance the uh, microorganisms they stuck and because of the movement of these cilia because of the movement of these cilia these uh, hair like st structures they sweep these bacteria and other foreign particles into the throat so that we cough it out or we swallow it this way this mucus membrane it acts as a physical barrier and coming to the next one the chemical barriers these chemical barriers they are also called as the functional or the physiological barriers physical barriers they are called as structural or anatomical barriers these chemical barriers they are called as functional or physiological barriers okay they include the secretions of the skin and secretions of the mucous membrane and other glands so the salivary glands they secrete saliva the sebaceous glands they secrete the sebum and the ceruminous glands they secrete the cerumen the ear wax all these they are called as the chemical barriers the gastric glands they secrete the hcl okay these are all included in the chemical barriers the first one the sweat are the sudoriferous glands the sweat are sudoriferous glands present in the skin they release uh, sweat this sweat which is released by these sweat glands it keeps our skin in acidic ph so that they may not find the way inside the skin okay in this way they minimize the growth of harmful bacteria okay and the second one is the oil glands or the sebaceous glands they secrete the sebum which keeps the skin oily with the oily face is because of the sebum and the next one what is the first thing when you cut your finger what is the first thing you do when you cut your finger we put our finger inside our nose when we cut our finger means the skin is damaged so that the microorganisms they find the way into the blood in order to prevent that one we immediately keep our finger inside our mouth the enzyme the lysozyme which is present in the saliva it kills the microorganisms okay that's the thing uh the saliva the tear and the mucus they contain particular enzyme called as lysozyme this lysozyme it kills the microorganism if if we swallow these microorganisms what happens they enter into our stomach there in the stomach there is again there is an acid a strong acid called as the hcl hydrochloric acid this hydrochloric acid it is produced by the auxentic cells of the gastric glands this hydrochloric acid it is highly acidic my it is nearly 0.92 1.8 ph means it is a very strong acid as it is very strong acid it kills the microorganisms this uh, acid particularly it is a potent killer of typhoid bacteria that is salmonella typhi if we take if you take these antacids more frequently what happens these antacids they neutralize the effect of this hcl as a result these typhoid bacteria they may not be killed that's why the regular 
use of antacids it makes the person more susceptible to typhoid that means we have unnecessarily we don't have to take these antacids okay and coming to the next one the ear wax the cerumen cerumen or the ear wax it also kills the microorganisms that, that enter the ear and similarly the vagina in females it contains a specialized bacteria called as lactobacillus acidophilus this lactobacillus acidophilus it converts the glycogen into lactic acid so that this lactic acid it is released in the walls of the vagina which keeps the acidic ph in the vagina this acidic ph in the vagina it minimizes the chances of vaginal infections by preventing the entry of microorganisms okay these are all the chemical barriers okay okay if the microorganisms are the pathogen if they escape this first line of defense which includes the physical barriers and the chemical barriers then what happens the microorganisms or the pathogens they find the way into the blood as a result the second line of defense it becomes active this second line of defense is called as the internal defense because the microorganisms they entered into the blood and this second line of defense it is internal defense and it prevents the spread of micro organism and it includes a number of white blood cells these are wbc white blood cells there are number of wbc different types of wbcs neutrophils eosinophils basophils monocytes and the macrophages the natural killer cells these are natural killer cells and interferons and also the uh, fever fever is also a type of second line of defense this fever and also inflammation we will discuss all these things on by one let me let us move to the wbcs wbcs as they are white in color they are also called as leukocytes these leukocytes they are nucleated cells and they are relatively lesser in number when compared with rbcs they are only 6000 to 8000 per cubic millimeter and generally they are short lived cells unlike the rbcs which live for 120 days these but these white blood cells they are short lived cells and these are responsible for eating particles by engulfing them and the number of these white blood cells it is increased during an infection okay these white blood cells they are further classified into agranulocytes and granulocytes granulocytes they have granules whereas agranulocytes they don't have granules these granulocytes they are further divided into three types based on their staining property eosinophils or eosinophils they are stained with acidic dyes basophils they are stained with basic dyes neutrophils they are stained with neutral dyes the agranulocytes they are further two types monocytes and lymphocytes coming to the next one the macrophages these macrophages the name itself indicates macro means bigger they are bigger in size phagos means eating these cells they are bigger in size and they engulf they engulf the pathogens these macrophages they are the specialized cells involved in the detection detection and phagocytosis and destruction of bacteria and other harmful harmful organisms here you can observe this bacteria it is eaten eaten by this macrophages this is called as phagocytosis and these macrophages they engulf the microorganisms okay and coming to the third type they are natural killer cells nk cells these nk cells they are also one type of lymphocytes these nk cells natural killer cells they kill the, the unwanted cells or the they kill the tumor cells cancer cells and thereby prevent tumors and they also kill the infected cells thereby they prevent microbial infection that's why they are called as natural killer cells and the next one is interferons interferons they are specialized proteins which are released in response to the presence of several viruses if a cell is infected by a virus it releases some proteins which in turn they reach the next cell the neighboring cell thereby the neighboring cells they develop their antiviral defense means suppose if a cell is infected by a virus what happens the host cell it releases these interferons these interferons 
they are received by the neighboring cell. These neighboring cell, in turn, they develop the antiviral defense. Thereby, they are helpful in limiting the infection, rate of infection. Okay. And coming to the next one, fever. Remember, fever is not a disease, but whenever there is fever, it indicates that something out of ordinary is going there in our body. Okay. Fever is a temporary condition, temporary increase in our body temperature, which is above the body temperature. Our normal body temperature is 98.6 Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. Whenever fever is there, then the body temperature is automatically increased. It is a temporary state. Okay. And this is because of illness. Okay. And having fever is a sign that something out of ordinary is going there in our body okay coming to the next one the inflammation what is inflammation here you can observe in this picture there is an injury what happens whenever there is an injury there exist four characters in common they, these four characters are together called as inflammation what are the four characters first one is swelling in the, in the area of injury we observe swelling okay and there the temperature also rises whenever there is an injury if we touch that area, we find the temperature above the normal body temperature. And there, another thing also we observe, that is the area is reddish, Red, it becomes reddish. Uh, this is the third property of inflammation. And the last one is pain is also there. These four characters are included in inflammation. What are they? Swelling, redness, local temper rising temperature and pain. These four characters are, the, are included in inflammation. Okay, why there occurs swelling? Whenever there is an injury, the blood vessels, they release histamines. These histamines, they are vasodilators. As a result, what happens? The blood vessels, they become dilated. As a result, more blood is received by the site of injury. More blood brings more phagocytes. More phagocytes, they engulf more microorganisms. Here you can observe phagocytosis is going there. These, phag these phagocytes, they engulf the microorganisms. Okay. As more and more blood is received, the blood, as because of this blood influx, there occurs swelling. And as a result, the area also becomes more reddish. Because of more blood, the area becomes more reddish. The temperature is also raised. All these are the four, all these are included in inflammation. Inflammation. Okay. All these things, they are included in the second line of defense. What are they? WBCs, macrophages, natural killer cells, interferon, fever and inflammation. Okay. And this includes the second line of defense. First line of defense, it is external. Whereas the second line of defense, it is internal. Internal. Okay. Because it, it is observed there inside the blood. Okay. And these are all involved in this second line of defense. And this first and second line together, they are non-specific. Means these white blood cells, macrophages, natural killer cells, they are not specific with a particular microorganisms. That's why they are called as non-specific. These are all involved in non-specific immunity. And let us now move to the specific immunity, which includes the antibodies. Which includes the antibodies. If this first end Second line defenses are also faced. What happens? The microorganisms, they have to face the third line of defense, which includes the antibodies. Uh, we will discuss in detail in our next session. Okay. This third line of defense. Okay. Thank you for watching. Follow me on YouTube simply by typing Lakshmi Narayana Gunta. Thank you.